All right, now this one was suggested by one of my lovely viewers and she asked me for some advice or like what kind of advice that spirit has for new readers or people who feel very, very drawn to the tarot or other forms of psychic stuff and <laughs> divination. Um, so I thought that was a really good question and a really, really good topic request. So I figured we'll do it. All right. So let's shuffle them up. I think I'm going to divide this into sort of like three questions. And I'm going to put the cards down first, I think. realize my camera was a little bit crooked there so I'll show you what I have first of all I have oh I didn't even <laughs> I didn't even tell you guys the question I was gonna ask so the first thing I wanted to ask was what is drawing you to this path um, this divination this connecting with spirit in this totally different way and I will show you what I have all right so first I have the tower I have the ten of wands the six of swords Page of Cups, and Strength. Now, my impressions of this, what I'm getting, is that for a lot of people who have recently become very interested in tarot cards, very interested in other types of divination, um, even just people who have been really interested in the spiritual path, it started, um, for a lot of you, it started with <clears throat> some kind of big event or some kind of like a really radical change in your life now some of this is due now i, I am getting a couple things for a vast majority of people especially those who are in the u.s this newfound um sort of feeling of being led to use cards and led to you know do this kind of psychic stuff some of it has to do with the with the presidency and how that has become a real like the last year and a half or a couple of years or whatever have really been um, like a big tower for the U.S. because we've seen just so much um, suffering, you know, with with migrant families, with with kids having their parents taken away, with um, laws trying to be passed that prohibit women's bodily autonomy, um, just to name a few examples of ways in which people have suffered. And just, so it's kind of like trying to make sense of all of that. And these two sort of go together, actually. Trying to make sense of all of that which is going on around you and trying to take your power back a little bit from this, from this burden. Now, for other people, and in sort of, okay, how do I explain this? Yeah, so for other people, and in a way this is kind of for everybody, um, this is part of your spiritual awakening. This is part of a new sort of chapter in your life. Now, the reason I'm getting the tower to sort of represent the beginning of one's spiritual awakening is because the ego starts to fall away. The, um the um i guess some people will call it third density way of thinking so the very earthbound uh ways of thinking so that's things like well this planet is all we have this is the only life that's in the universe you know we only get one go round in life and there's you know this is all there is and and just thinking that everything that is on this planet is what is real and what is true. Um, and we'll, we start to learn during our spiritual awakening that that's not necessarily the case, that there are a lot of other kinds of truths out there that we start to learn, but it really shakes us. It really does shake our, shake your core a little bit. It, um, 
for some, it's very blessed and it's very joyful and it's just wonderful and rainbows and sunshine all around. I have not personally met anybody whose spiritual awakening has been that easy. So for the most part, it it can start off with a bit of a bang, <laughs> just like this card is implying. So some of what's drawing you to this spiritual path or this tarot path or the psychic path is that it's just kind of part of your awakening. And for other people, it's just trying to make sense of what's going on in the world around them, trying to take their power back from some of the burdens and some of the ways in which they are suffering. <clears throat> Then we have the Six of Swords. Normally, this is my card for a tough transition, but in this case, um, I think what's maybe tough about it is is sticking with it and is... Um, I'm sorry, I'm just trying to think of how to word this right. <clears throat> sticking with it because tarot cards and divination and even just like all the psychic skills are just that, skills. So, I mean, there are some people who are just born innately psychic and have been seeing spirits and have been connected since birth, but there are a lot more people who seem to awaken later on in life, um, whether that's in your 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, 80, you know, and it's just... What's hard about it is sometimes we think that we have to be really good at something right away when we first start doing it, but that's not actually true. Um, I mean, I've been reading tarot cards pretty much every day for over a year now. And I mean, I have a channel. I've been doing, I've been getting better and better at it every time that I do it. But when I first started, I really struggled too. And it was for a little while, it was hard for me to stick with it because I was like, well, aren't, aren't I supposed to be really good at this right away? Isn't this supposed to make sense? And it didn't until I kept practicing and kept learning different ways to read cards and different ways to meditate, different ways to connect with spirit. And um, <clears throat> it was sort of that mixing it up a little bit and eventually letting go of whether or not I was good enough at it or not or whether or not everything every message that came in would make sense to me um and of course i'm using myself as an example i can only speak for myself but it's it's part of your journey too some of the six of swords is just like um the card for you know like a, like a journey like an adventure there sometimes this is literally a card for traveling and what I mean by traveling is just sort of traveling along your life path or your life's river, <laughs> life's ocean, whatever is on this card. So sometimes it is kind of hard to um, really, really get into the habit of practicing and working on your skills because it's just like any other skill. Divination is really, honestly, it's like how swimming is a skill, drawing, writing, reading, math. Those are all skills. Nobody is necessarily born. Some people have a tendency like to be better at one thing than another thing, but no one is like born with these set traits. You are a math genius and that is what you are. Or you are a creative writing master and that is what you are. Nobody is like born like that, right? So nobody is really born with you are psychic and that's well, okay, some people are born with like the you are psychic and this is what you are, but there is nobody who is born as you are just part of this physical earth realm and this is all you are and this is all you're capable of. No, that's not true. This is part of your journey. This is why you've been sort of drawn to the, the cards and the various forms of divination because this is part of your journey. <clears throat> and then the, the page of cups so there's like the good news everyone <laughs> I'm trying to do my best like I could do my best Professor Farnsworth impression but I'm not going to <laughs> good news everyone <laughs> oh no but anyways <laughs> this 
Um, we learn so much. You will learn so much about yourself, about the world around you, about the spirit world when you start picking up cards um, or other tools of divination. But of course, the person who requested this did ask me specifically about reading tarot. So um, you do learn a lot about yourself and it's just, it's so amazing. And once you sort of really get into the groove, you find a method of reading that works for you because there's no one universal way to read the tarot cards. I mean, each card has its um, basic meanings, but then you build on that and you go off of your uh, intuitive impressions and your intuitive impressions, that information comes from the spirit realm. And so for some, this sort of opens up this like childlike joy and this childlike excitement on this new adventure in their lives, this new part of their lives where they start learning how to connect with spirit. And it's very joyful. And those who are on the other side, who are on the spirit side, they feel a lot of joy too when they realize that, oh my goodness, this person on earth that I love is learning how to connect with us. Oh my gosh, we get to talk to her more. Like, you know, they're going to be communicating with us first instead of us like waiting until it's okay for us to go to them because sometimes our angels and our spiritual guides can't necessarily act unless we talk to them first. Um, so there's just a lot of joy all around. And this is going to be a part of your path that, like I said, at first it can be really tough while you're just learning how to do it. But once you get past your ego mind telling you, and I don't mean ego mind as an insult or anything, I'm just saying we all have an ego mind. That's the voice in our head that says you're not going to do this. You're not good enough at this. Once you get past that, then you sort of enter into this phase of joy and excitement and just this like childlike um for some people, some people are already super into their spiritual path and are very wise and have grown a lot in spirit. And for others, whoop, it's almost like attending spiritual kindergarten or spiritual play school when you're just learning how to um, connect with the other side in this way. And then the next thing for what is drawing you to this path, the last thing to answer this first question is strength. So, um, like I said, this is just part of your life path <clears throat> and it's, there's, it's like you've, there's been a really strong persuasion for you to start doing this and to start learning these things. Now, I did say earlier that your angels and your spiritual guides can't always act unless you give the consent or if you ask for divine intervention. There are some times where that's right. They can't, um act for you if it's going to infringe on your free will decisions but they're allowed to give you hints they're allowed to put things in your path especially things that are just meant to happen going to happen like this tower is a major arcana card and the major arcana to me refers to the bigger picture so it's something that's happened that was definitely meant to happen so that's kind of again with this strength um it's something that maybe your soul even chose before you incarnated here to awaken at a certain age or um, start, you know, learning more about your spirituality and connecting with the other side. This is saying that you're being drawn to this because, yeah, like I said, it's your path to the strength is also saying that you can be really good at it. You're once like we talked about it earlier. Once you get past the ego mind being like, this is confusing, I can't do this, I don't have confidence. Once you get past that, you learn that you can do this. You do have the confidence. And whether you consciously mean to or not, your confidence in your abilities, your skills will build and build and build until you really, you're shuffling cards one day, something falls out and you know exactly what it's telling you and what it means. Um, and the angels have like, there's just been a really strong influence. So your guides and your guardian angels have sort of been like poking you on the shoulders, being like, hey, 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 tarot cards. Or hey, 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 
meditation. You're suddenly interested in these things now. Okay. So I hope that answers um, what is drawing you to this path. The card on the bottom of the deck is the lovers. This is saying um, that this is sort of the beginning. Oop. Hi, kitty cat. Here, hang on. Lay down. Lay down. Good girl. Good girl. All right. Um, I, I, I was going to say maybe not the beginning of your partnership with spirit because our loved ones and those who are on the spirit side, we've known them forever. They've known us forever. Um, but you're becoming, this is the beginning of you being consciously aware of your partnership with your loved ones on the other side. Now that your loved ones, that can be your guides, your guardian angels, your ancestors, um, family members that you knew who passed away in the past, friends of yours who maybe have passed away. They're all with you. They all want to connect with you. And uh, yeah, so there, that's that one. I think next, <laughs> next, we're going to move on to question number two, which is what are your guides and angels telling you? And I think to answer that question, I'm going to get my angel oracle cards. This kind of felt the need to do that. Already on the bottom, it says spiritual path. That's just, that's like validating. I don't know if you guys can see that, but yeah, just kind of validating. Like you're feeling drawn to this because this is part of your life path. This is the direction that you need to go. So that's why your angels and guides have been pestering you, you know, tapping you on the shoulder or whispering in your ear. Hey, you should learn about tarot cards or hey, you should watch the spiritual YouTube channel. So, okay, hang on. I had two cards come out. So I think those are the ones that want to be read. So what are your guides and angels trying to tell you in regards to, um, maybe why you want to, or why you've been feeling so drawn to tarot and to um, divination. <laughs> okay, the first one, I love the art, it's beautiful. The first card says purification and detoxification. It is time to release physical and energetic toxins from your life. That, the, the tower card from earlier just flashed up in my brain again. Um, when, when we kind of start on our spiritual journey or we, um, start being conscious of our spiritual development, there is a falling away of aspects of your ego self. Sometimes it's all at once and it is a crazy emotional time. Some people go through weeks or months of anxiety or depression, whatever it is that is um, unhealthy in your life, emotionally or energetically or otherwise, it what happens with lots of people, and I'm getting intuitively now, the reason that that tower card came up also is because for some people, all of these things in their lives that are, um, like I said, unhealthy or are physical and energetic toxins like this card is referring to, they have to be put in the forefront of your attention so that you can acknowledge them and do the inner work and the healing that you need to do and release it. Some of it too is when you are reading tarot cards and you are connecting with spirit, they can actually help you to point, help point out what it is um, that you need to be healing from and working on. The next angel card we have is heightened intuition. So your guides and your angels are saying, be extra aware of your inner knowingness as it is trustworthy. So another reason that you're being drawn to this path is because this, um, for a lot of people, tarot cards are one really, really good way to boost your intuition. So like I had said earlier, um, all the cards have their basic meanings. Like there's a little white book that comes with every tarot deck and kind of tells you what each card sort of means, but then you have to rely on the intuitive guidance that you receive so that you can 
get the meaning right when it comes to the, the context of your reading or the context of like the person you're reading on. That's why some of my cards, I get double meanings because um, intuitively it's maybe one symbol, but it's telling me multiple things. So that there's that. And question number three is how will this help you to grow? So we kind of did learn that it will boost your intuition. I mean, I guess this question is sort of being answered by the other cards. <clears throat> and what sort of fell out, there's conflict, there's making a choice, and then there's seeing something from a different perspective. So when we start this path, you might find that um, again, almost like that tower card, but this is just like a more dulled down version. Um, helps. This might help you to release inner conflicts. So between your spirit self and your ego self. When you make the choice to start or consciously continue your spiritual path or learn how to connect with spirit... Look at her blindfold. It's like when you make that choice, you're also making the choice to take the blindfold off. And you're going to be seeing everything differently. You will see everything differently. Maybe not all at once, but the more intuitive bits and bobs that come in and the more information that you learn, the more your perspectives on life and on earth and on the universe and on other people, those things will change. So instead of maybe if you're going through a hard time and being like, why is this happening to me? Why is life always happening to me? You might start seeing it as, um, oop, what am I learning from this? What soul lesson can be learned from this hardship? Um, what is life doing for me and what can I do in response or what can I do to make things better or what can I do to learn more and improve my mood, my way of thinking, my attitude, my aura, whatever it is. This is how it will help you to grow. You're going to start seeing everything very differently and it's a wonderful, beautiful thing. And the hanged man is a major arcana. So again, spiritual, bigger picture. Learning to read tarot cards, learning to connect with angels and guides is honestly the most life-changing and like wonderful decision I have. One of the most life-changing and wonderful decisions I've made. And... I hope that that answers your questions. I'm so sorry to the viewer who requested it. I can't remember what your username was, but you know who you are. You are brilliant. Thank you for requesting this because it's something I didn't even think to read on, but I think it's important. So with that said, I hope that answered your question because um, it sort of just verified what I was thinking too about why I felt drawn to tarot cards. Anyways. Let me know if you liked this. If you have any other requests that you want me to read on, just, you know, leave it in the comments or comment on one of my community posts or something like that. Um, yeah, if you liked my channel, feel free to subscribe, hit the thumbs up because that helps me a lot. You can hit notifications if you want to. That's totally on you. And with that said, I hope you guys have an awesome day.